Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar. Welcome to the Social ROI After Chat. I'm here with Ian Moyes. Ian, wow, Hi. that was a great chat. What did you think? Thank. It was good. It was good. It was uh, fast paced, but lots of good input, good questions, and a good good mix of uh, people. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, there was a, a great group of people. It always is. We have such a great community every week. I, I'm just always so wowed by uh, everybody that just ke keeps coming back time and time again. Um, we had a really good chat today. Um, I am uh, pulling up here on uh, Twitter. We talked about social selling, uh, talking about benefits and best practices. And um, I wanted to talk about a couple of the items that were discussed during the chat that I thought was interesting. Um, early on, there was a tweet. Uh, you were having a conversation back and forth with um, uh, Tim, who's with Stoneham, Stoneham Press or Stoneham Press. Um, and I loved what you said. You said social selling is not selling. It's social sales engagement. And that's the correct term. Can you elaborate on that? What did you mean by that? Yeah, I, I, so social selling as a term is, is is nicely packaged, but it's not r the reality. And I often struggle with this when I talk to people because, I, I, oh, well, our product wouldn't work. Why? Because what the perception of the name gives is you're taking orders over social. Um, and our product's not B2C or it's not packaged that way. It's not consumable where they can just – so it wouldn't fit. And it's because the term alludes to people, what does it sound like you're doing? You're selling over social. It's not what you're doing. You know, this is about, the big thing is it's about engagement. It's about listening, observing, researching. The ideal is you want to get two-way engagement, but the reality is to take that engagement to lead you into a real conversation like this or over the phone or in person in which case you're back into a traditional sales engagement where most people is their comfort zone. They're used to that. That's what they want. What they don't realize is the whole social selling piece is actually really the real term should be um, using social to get early engagement because the world has changed. But that's not as clicky and packaged. Right. So we call it social selling, right? Right. But that's what people need to understand. What is it really? It's a way to start a conversation with someone and to try and find common ground where there's value for both of you to take the conversation further. That is so well said. I, I love that. Do you feel like brands are getting better with this on social? I, I, I think the bigger the brand, particularly with social selling, struggle because what I've seen happen is the brand police come in is where does social normally sit? It's marketing. And the first extension you tend to do is social advocacy in a company. Well, we get our employees to be social advocates. And that usually translates into corporate brand produces something and then says internally, could you all reshare this out? Really? Is, is that really helping you? Because the people you really want to share it out are the influencers to your target audience. And that will vary depending on your B2C, B2B, et cetera. And we see that best, I guess, in B2C, where many of the top brands have figured out the celebrity market is a good influencer to the community. If the Kardashians tweet out about something that's fashion-wise or jewelry or a picture wearing something, it has an impact on the sales or the popularity or the visits to the site, et cetera. You know, so that's why it's product placement, as we've seen in the movies grow over the years. It, it's product placement in, in a social world. As you move into B2B, it's more subtle because the influencers aren't that blatant. So it, it often there, it's more challenging. You've got to be more creative around the content you create. So I want to get to a particular buyer persona, an audience, Okay, who influences that audience? And it may be analysts, certain press, certain reviewers, etc. How do I get those people to share my message to the audience I want to get to? And that's the subtlety of the content. And it isn't here's a product data sheet or a re review or an endorsement. It's we've created some thought leadership content that happens to be from our brand that they may share the top 10 tips to do X, Y, Z. 
that they may share on to their audience because it's got value for them to share, the byproduct of which our brand goes attached with it. And I think that's the harder piece because it's less tangible. We spoke on, on the discussion about ROI measurement and some of that stuff, like a lot of marketing, in fact, is it's not easy to do the, the, the 360 loop of this correlates directly to that much business. Um, so I think brands struggle often then when it extends into social selling of actually we're going to have salespeople out there engaging on a public forum doing stuff that isn't under our control. Well, my view on that is reality is you've got salespeople visiting a customer. You don't know really what they're saying. And that you're not monitoring everything they do and say they're representing you. You're paying them good money and you're trusting them to go out and talk to a customer who might be spending uh, millions of dollars with you. But what you're worried about is then posting something on social. So train them, give them some ad, some advice and training, not quite as, as detailed as speaking to the press, but help them understand messaging, et cetera. Adds a skill to them, but they have a voice. You've probably got some great thought leaders and influencers in your business. What if you've got 2,000 salespeople? What you're doing is shutting them all down from speaking to the world and being a person, an individual, which is what people buy from. They buy into the brand, but if you're selling something, they're buying from a person. They're engaging with a person. And that's often the first way that they're going to get to engage with them in the real world. The world's changed. The buyers have changed. As I think someone's posted, and you asked one of the questions, buyers are doing their research and checking everything out, but you're saying, but, but don't engage with them. Don't engage with them in the way the buyer want, is choosing to potentially engage back let's engage the old way but that's not what the buyer's doing so I, I think it's just a corporate fear the smaller businesses tend to pick this up quicker and be more flexible to it because they're not so worried about that corporate brand so it, it's hard i get it but i think people need to wake up because we, we're never unfortunately fortunately, or for, uh, unfortunately we're never going back the world's changed and it's going to keep changing Absolutely. I mean, just like look back with how the music business was, they were so against streaming music, right? And yeah. streaming music won. And it seems like today with big businesses, they, they are not embracing the power of social media. Um, and there's going to come a time where that's just going to crash over them because this is the world we live in now. Um, so yeah, yeah, very well and we, said. And, we also, and it's going to keep changing, right? We, video is now the new medium and is increasingly yeah. so because bandwidth is becoming easier, cheaper, faster, um, even on mobile devices and, and people digest video quicker and short as well. You know, they, I think YouTube is one minute, 17 seconds is the average view time. So you've got to get your message across quick, sharp, and in the medium, that your audience wants to digest it in, not what you want to give it in. It's the outside in approach. Yeah, very, very true. Um, there was another tweet that, that stood out to me that I wanted to bring up. Um, we were talking about, um, uh, it was question number two. It was early on when we were talking about list three ways that someone can get started with social selling. Sure. And I love how you started off with only three. Um, Cause yes, there's so many things you can do. Um, you talked about creating a customer focused, polished bio and you recommend mm -hmm. LinkedIn and Twitter. So can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So, so the first thing is, and I bring it back to the, when I talk to sales, people say, well, you know, let's go back, forget social fundamentals are first impression. We always talk first impressions count. So if you're going to go and meet someone or you're going for an interview, you're not going in your ripped jeans, right? You're going to go, you're, you're going to assume conservative and probably a suit and tie, polished shoes. You do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course I would. Okay. And then you look at their social bio. And it's a picture of them having fun or so because that's the personality they want to elude. But guys, people judge you by this stuff. Um, and women often, and I get why, but it's the wedding photo because that's where they, the, all, the, all the professional makeup has done all this stuff. But you need to have something that represents you in the right area of what you're doing so uh, often you see marketing agencies who are trying to attract their funky and they'll do a funky picture and stuff and it's all corporate that fits because that's the nature of the business they're in if you're in fashion 
it will be slightly different. If you're in business, think who is your audience you're addressing and be appropriate to them. Would you, if that was the pic, that's the picture you're choosing to use as a first impression, is that how you're going to go and look when you visit them? No, actually. Well, why are you using it as your picture? And I, and I recommended on the chat, as you saw, photophilo.com. It's something I come across accidentally, where you can put your photo in and have other people rate it for authenticity. And there's, there's three or four criteria. And you'll get a feedback. And, you, and the game is, it's free. You do some ratings of other people. So click yes, no, and rate them on three or four criteria. You earn some free credits, and then you can put yours into yours. So I did social selling tra t training with my team recently, and I, and I sh exposed to them something I learned. So I changed my bio picture, and you'll see on there now the one with the glasses on. Right. And I showed them, here's the same press picture I had done without glasses, and here's with, and here's the results. And it got a lot of laughs because the without glasses, um, trustworthiness and, and some of the criteria on there came at like 40 odd percent or 50 percent with glass. Same picture, exactly the same, taken with and without glasses, massively more trustworthy, um, responsible or, or um, gravitas, etc. with glasses. So I changed the picture wow. because the results said it. Now, I would. How can glasses make? But it did. It's so easy to test something like that, but people just don't think to do Oh, what does it matter? Right. It, it matters. The science around it, psychology around this. Do you want that little edge that they go, hey, they, yeah. And it's a subconscious thing. People can't control how they feel about a first impression. You know, you make that judgment. It's in your DNA. It's not a conscious thought thing. It's instantaneous. And what you say about yourself, make it a little bit personal. I talk on there and I learned this and I'm always trying to tune it, but I talk about how I got into computing at 14 and it was a passion of mine. And just make it a bit you, you, who you are as opposed to fact, fact, fact. Put that in there. There's a bit of credibility stuff. But think if you're going for a job or you're going to go and visit someone, the chances are they'll look you up. It takes 10 seconds on any device, anywhere at any time, they can check you out. Don't you do it? I would say to people, do you check people out? Out of curiosity, if nothing, oh, yeah, I have a quick look. They're doing the same to you. And that's the first impression. It's now digital, not when you walk through their office door. And if they've taken a, they've got some bad fit or, or under, underlying feeling, of, I'm not sure they look trustworthy, but they don't think that. It, it's just a gut. It's innate. Manage that as best you can to your advantage. If you don't, and think it doesn't matter, that's your choice. But often in business, and I was I get back to an old basic, it's a horse race. And the horse wins a vote by a photo finish, wins the prize. You don't have to win by, it can be such small, lots of small things. So why would you not spend some minutes, a, a few hours over a week, just tuning it? Because it goes with you and it's it's visible for how long? So enough said, but it, it's just it, it's just a bugbear of mine that people are lackadaisical about something which gets can get seen by so many people so often and have such an impact, but they can't be bothered to put a little bit of effort in up front. I agree. You, so well said, you know, Ian, because you see these profile pictures that is like this is how they're representing themselves and their brand um you know especially the solopreneurs the small businesses uh when they're trying to build their personal brand and then they wonder you know why is it not really working if they just listen to that soundbite of what you just said um they would totally get it and, so, and, and, and these days get, getting a, getting a nice bio shot done with mm -hmm. the cameras we have now even if you do it yourself or a photo sh shoot with a pro photographer it's going to cost you a hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars. It, it's, it's not the end of the world. If it's your business and you want to be a thought yeah. leader, in, in, really, you know, yeah. it's not a big investment with, with the coffee shops here. It's always coffee, right? But how many cups of coffee is that, which right. compared to the value of what you're getting, it, it's invest a little bit. I so agree for everybody that's watching right now. If you do not have a professional headshot, listen to Ian, 
go spend however many cups of coffees that comes out to and do it because it's so worth it. You know, I had, I had a photo, but it was, it was outdated. It, it needed, you know, my website needed freshening up. I knew this, but with my personal brand, you know, it's like, okay, I got, I'm a solopreneur juggling all these things. And then I was being mentored a few years ago by Mike Stelzner, a social media examiner. He said, Madeline, fix up your website, make it look more professional and go get new photos, go hire a photographer, get some headshots, get some new stuff. And it was stuff that I knew, but I needed somebody to tell me. Right. And then I went and did it and it was career changing to go do that. And, and, and and I'd recommend you, once you've got the headshot, use it across all your profiles Yes. And link your profiles to each other. Make it easy for someone. A bugbear of mine is you go to the LinkedIn profile and there's no link. You go on Twitter and you find them. Why is the link not on LinkedIn to their Twitter profile and vice versa? Right. Make it easy, make it easy for me as the audience to find you everywhere you've got. If you've cr- taken the trouble to create the profile, now make it easy for me to come find them. You want me yeah. to have a look? Well, give me the link. Don't make me do the work. Exactly. I mean, I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I really appreciate your time. I, I could sit here and talk with you all night. You, you're just a wealth of information. Um, real quick, what is the link to that photo site? Because I think that is really intriguing. I'm going to pull that up and post it here in the comments sure. for everybody to check out. Uh, it's photofeeler, P-H-O-T-O-feeler.com. Okay. I, I found it by accident. It's one of those little, I like these little social, there's so many social tools that can enable you to do really clever stuff for free. I love a it. Few, a little bit of effort. And it. It's a great one. It lets you test, and, and you can have some fun with it. Test your photo and test a different one. And it, it's very interesting. As I said, the glasses, but it's very interesting, the results you get. And why wouldn't you not, why wouldn't you crowdsource, crowdsource that? What does the average group out there think of this and this? Don't make the decision yourself. You can't tell. You're too close yeah. to it. You see your face every day. Let someone else guide you with that. Yeah, it says to get out and buy his feedback. And, you know, we sometimes see people post on Facebook and, and they show their different photos and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to decide which one. I love when people do that. It's like, okay, Letting the crowd decide for them, which is so yeah. smart because it's too easy to, you know, think you're going to pick the right one and you're way off base. I agree. But what I like about photo feeler, the challenge with doing it on Facebook is it's your peer group that's going to do it. Yeah. And it's like anything, right? We, we saw that in the elections and all these conversations is people tend to have a group that all think the same way because that's why you aggregate together. Whereas photo feeler says, because you, your customers aren't going to be like that. So Photo Feeder says, I don't know who's going to rape. I'm going to get more, a better sam- a, a neutral sample set as opposed to people who are biased who know what I look like and may not give me. I want a neutral piece. What does what the people who've never met me think as opposed to people who do know me? That, that's the difference, I think. And I think that's an important statistical variance that, that it helps with. I absolutely agree. Um, I'm going to post your Twitter on here. Um, how else can people get in touch with you? What are the what are the best ways? I mean, do you prefer Twitter or what? What do you prefer? Twitter. The, the two I tend to leave with are Twitter and LinkedIn. LinkedIn people will find me at ianmoist.co.uk and Twitter at ianmoist.cloud. I've, I've masked both of them so that straight away I don't need to worry about what's, what's the URL. I can tell you those, they're memorable. And again, it's a nice, easy way of helping the audience find you. And they that costs, I don't know, $15, $20 a year for a couple of domains. Right. And, it just may, and, and the other thing about doing that, by the way, is as you then, if you build your own bio and get backlinks to those domains, that domain carries the back so we just check those out interesting enough and my backlink link the rating of those is quite high i'd never checked it before for an individual but because every blogger i've been using those for years in blogs is saying please backlink to those as i'd like you to do because it then raises the profile of those in searches and everything so again again it's always emphasizing that make it easy for your audience to find you right 
That is so smart. Thank you so much, Ian. This has just been amazing. And I really appreciate you coming on the chat with us uh, on Twitter and then doing the Facebook Live with us. Uh, so everybody go check out Ian on uh, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And uh, we'll see you again next week for another amazing chat. Bye, guys. See ya. Thank you.